Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another bit of an investigation video. This one's going to be a bit more serious but I'm hoping it will be quite interesting. I'm hoping to answer one of life's biggest questions and that is, is there anything special about model railway motors? So a little while ago I was looking at some of my locos, uh, this was one of them, and I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to try and pick up a few spare motors just to keep them here in the loft uh, so that if I ever have any problems I'll try to replace them. So I thought, well, these are Hornby locos, a lot of them use the same motor, so it would be wise to have a few. So I thought, first stop, let's check out Hornby.com and see if there are any in stock. So I found some and... £17.49 for a single motor. So I thought, man, yeah, there must be something very, very special about model railway motors if they cost that much. But I thought, you know what, no, Hornby's prices on Hornby.com are normally quite a bit higher than on other retailers. So I hit up Peter's Spares on eBay and... <laughs> It's even more, £23.52 plus £4 postage, which means that we're paying the best part of £30 for a single motor. Crazy stuff. I thought, mm, 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 I ain't buying any motors for that kind of money. But I had one last look on eBay. I did a lot of trawling and I managed to find these. Ooh, this looks a lot better. £1.98 for a single motor and I thought yep that's definitely my kind of price so I actually bought 10 and I ended up paying £1.61 each and I have one right here. Now big question then are Hornby and other manufacturers paying £1 each? I mean they're buying, buying in bulk so if they are using these chances are they'll be paying much less than £1 something. Are they using cheap motors like this or are they using something special? That's what I want to try and find out. I should also say that the motor I've got here clearly does not have a worm drive on it. When you buy a spare from Hornby.com or Peter's Spares, the worm drive comes pre-fitted. Maybe there's a lot of value to the worm drive, although I have found brass ones on eBay for about £3.99, something like that. So it's fair to say that those worm drives, while they may add a little bit to the cost, they're not responsible for those massive figures. So today I'm going to be doing some tests. What I thought I would do is the motor in this Merchant Navy class is absolutely fine. So I'm going to put this through its paces. I'm going to test the slow speed. I'm going to test the pulling power, the smoothness, the current draw, more or less everything I can reasonably think of, see how it performs. Then I'm going to retrofit it with the brand new Chinese £1.60 motor. And we're going to see if the performance changes. Is it better? Is it worse? Is it usable with such a cheap motor? So you guys make a prediction. Is it going to be better? Is it going to be worse? Or is it going to be the same as the Hornby motor in performance? Let me know up there and we will find out. First things first though, let's put the Merchant Navy through its paces and find out what it's capable of with its original stock Hornby motor. So first things first then, I thought I would just let this loco do a couple of laps for you so that you can see how it runs on a, a normal basis. So I'm going to set this to forwards and get it started. Generally speaking from memory, I would have said these are excellent runners. They really are good. That's it at 50% speed there. As you can see, nice and smooth, no jerkiness or anything like that. These are good motors. They're five pole motors. I believe they're skew wound. Hornby have used them in many, many models and they really are quite good. I'm not saying the Hornby motors are bad by any means. Today's investigation is trying to find out whether cheap motors are able to perform the same and possibly try to find out whether model railway manufacturers really do just use motors that cost that little. Should be very interesting. So there we go. Hopefully you get a sense of how that one runs. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, yeah, very, very good runner overall. Next test then, I'm going to pop this loco onto the rolling road and measure the current that the motor draws in order to find out more about the efficiency of the motor and how much power it's actually using. Right, so I'm going to do this at three different speeds on the controller and I'm going to do it forwards and backwards and take current readings from all of that. So first of all, I'm going to set the controller to 20. Hopefully we'll get some really slow movement from that. At the very slowest speed then, about, I would say 0 0.08 amps. 50% is 0 0.11 amps. 80% is, let's see, 0 0.13 I'm going to give it. Okay, let's see if that changes at all in reverse. 0 0.1, it's a bit less this, this time, 0 0.12. Okay, good. Next up then, let's test the slow speed. I've got quite an interesting test lined up for that one. All right, so this is how I'm going to try and do the slow speed test. I'm going to start the loco and try to get it at the slowest possible speed I can without it cutting out. Once it's stabilised, I'm going to start the timer once the loco reaches this first screwdriver. 
and stop the timer once the loco, the front buffer, let's say, reaches the second screwdriver, and that will be the time. Then I'll repeat the process three times and get an average. Then with the new motor, we'll try it again and see if there's any difference. Now, obviously, there is quite a lot of room for error with this experiment. It's not dreadfully scientific, but I think it should show us if there are any major differences between the two motors. So with that, let's give that a try. Let's get this loco to crawl as slowly as I can. And I've realized that it's actually an incredibly good slow crawler, so I'm going to speed it up and get it to stabilize a little bit closer to the first screwdriver. Okay. bit more. There we go, that appears to be stable. So I'm going to have to speed this up and I'm going to have to try and get this accurately started. Tell you what, I'm going to move the second screwdriver. Okay, start. I'm going to put the second screwdriver here just in front of this join because there's no sense in doing such a big dif a distance. <laughs> If the loco does cut out, we'll have to stop and speed it up and try again. Right, I'll come back to you in just a second. Okay, so that last one was the best yet. That was 55 seconds it took, which gives us an average of 45.45 seconds for that distance. That is very, very impressive. I will be very surprised if the cheaper motor can match that. Okay, the next test then is pulling power. Let's see how much grunt these motors actually have. So the pulling force should be quite easy to measure. I'm just going to hook up the Newton meter onto here. And then we're going to try it hauling at three different speeds. So the first speed is going to be 20 on the controller. And there we go. It is very slightly wheel slipping there. And we have 0 0.32. Next up then, we're going to set the power to 50 and try again. That is 0 0.41. And finally, I'm going to set the speed right up to 80. And I've got to get down low so I don't have any parallax errors with this. And that is more or less the same. It's a little bit less, actually, the dropping, 0 0.4. Yeah, that's because all the power's being lost, I assume, because of the wheel slipping. Next thing, then, is to change the motor. And I'm even going to show you, roughly speaking, how to do it. All right, so the first step is, of course, to remove the loco body and take out and desolder the old motor. You don't need any special tools, really, for this. You just need basic tools, uh, soldering skills as well. And if you're using a motor that doesn't come with a worm drive, which is the most likely scenario, you'll also need a gear puller. Mine cost me about 10 quid, so if you change more than one motor, you'll have made your money back on that. So now I have the motor in my hands. As you can see, I've managed to get it out of the loco. The first major job, uh, the only difficult thing really, is taking the worm drive off this. This is where you can use a heat gun if you've got one. If not, just use the gear puller and you'll have to have a bit of strength for it. But I'm going to try and heat this up and see if I can't get it off that way. Pay attention to how far the worm drive is shoved onto the shaft there because you'll need to replicate that on the new motor. Okay, so it's in the gear puller already. I'm now going to warm up this bad boy and try not to burn the heck out of my fingers at the same time. And you just turn the gear puller, or whatever you're using. Bearing in mind it will be hot if you've used a heat gun. And I'm sorry that you can't see this too great. And once it's gone all the way, you should be able to pull the gear right off. Okay, so now I'm going to get the new motor and make sure that the shaft length is correct. Yeah, as you can see, the shafts are more or less the same length. Some of them have much longer shafts and some of them have a shaft at the rear. Uh, you can just cut those down if you like or just try and buy some that look roughly right. Okay, so the old motor goes here. As you can see, they don't look dreadfully different. There are some differences, but they are quite clearly very similar. Yep. So now I'm going to make sure I don't get them mixed up. This is the old one. And I'm going to push the worm drive onto the new motor. And I'm going to do that with the vise. If you've got like a, a press or something, I guess that would be better. I'm going to do it the naughty way. Okay, that was very easily done. You don't have to be surgically accurate of the, with the positioning of the worm drive, but it has to be roughly the same as it was before. Okay, I'm now going to put it back into the loco and solder the wires back to it. And the job should be done. It's very, very quick and simple.
Okay, it is done and it's all back together. It took literally 10 minutes, I kid you not. Um, it would be less obviously if you didn't have to swap the gear, but even swapping that worm drive, 10 minute job and it's a good one. So I'm gonna now put this all back together. I'm gonna hope that it works. Normally I would recommend testing it. I'm just gonna put it all back together and uh, test it for the first time on the track, just for a bit of dramatic tension. So I'll do that and I'll see you in a sec. All right, so the £1.60 motor has been successfully fitted into the, well, like £150 plus model here. Let's give this its first ever try and see if I got it right or if I messed it up. Let's see. It works. <laughs> Look at that. Now, don't forget, just because the loco has been run in, doesn't mean that the motor has, so you will have to run this in before you do any sort of serious testing with it. Straight out of the box, so to speak, though, let's see how it does at slow speeds. Tell you what, to say that's not been run in yet, the expensive Hornby motors ain't looking too good right now. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very, very good crawl. Right, let's get this running then, and I'll show you it running, and we'll uh, see if we can detect any differences. Here we go. All right, so what do you think so far? Um, it's not a lot different. It's a little bit slower, possibly. Not greatly different. The slow speed was still really good. Haven't taken any measurements yet, so I've no idea what the performance is really like. But I'll come back to you in, well, an hour or so after this has had a chance to run in and we'll give it some proper tests and find out for sure. Okay, I am back. And it has done an hour's running in without blowing up or damaging the controller or burning out, nothing like that. I must say I wasn't expecting that. I was half expecting the thing to fail after an unreasonable amount of time, but it has been absolutely fine. And uh, yeah, I can't actually feel as maybe a tiny bit of warmth, but really nothing noticeable. So I think we can now proceed with the testing. First then, let's do the current test. Okay, current test then. Let's go with, well, yeah, let's do 20 to start with as we did before. I wonder if it will start at 20. I know the other one had trouble. Wow. Look at that control. The old motor was not like that. The old motor was struggling. 0, 0.0, what are we choosing? It's flickering between seven and eight, so I'll do what I did last time and be 0 0.08, hey, exactly the same. Who would have thought that? Okay, knock it up to 50%. It was 0 0.11 before, but it is switching between the two. And then let's set it up to 80%, well, 80 speed. 0 0.13. That is identical to the original motor. In fact, it's now dropped to 0 0.12. Let's try this in reverse. That is 0 0.10. So the current draw appears to be largely very, very, very similar. If it isn't exactly the same, it's slightly better. So it's a bit more efficient. Could that mean that it's just less powerful? Possibly, but we will do the power test in a little while. I'm uh, just trying this again forwards, uh, 0 0.11, yeah, no, we're about right, yeah. Brill. So, the current test is looking very strong for the replacement motor, very good. Okay, let's move on then and do the slow speed run. Okay, let's get this started then at the slowest possible speed, see if I can stabilise it and then start the timer as before when it reaches the first screwdriver. Right, it's going. Is it? I think it is, yeah, but I'm gonna give it a little bit more just to be sure. There we are, that's, well, we'll see if that's stable. Oh man, this is just clearly better. I mean, I don't need to time it really. <laughs> I'm going to. This is unbelievable, look. Can you even tell that it's moving? I it doesn't look like it's moving to me, but when I get right above the model and look down at the buffer, it really is edging forwards really slow. Good Lord. It's been 40 seconds and it's gone one sleeper's worth. Okay, stop, that is all three tests done. Uh, the average of the new motor then was 63.88 seconds. That is a 30% improvement in slow speed on the old motor. 
That is amazing. I wasn't really expecting the new motor to be able to match the old one, let alone beat it considerably. Anyway, one more test, the pulling power. Let's see how this one hauls. Okay, so at 20 speed, that is measuring 0 0.28. At speed 50, I'm seeing 0 0.4 newtons, 0 0.40. And at 80, I'm seeing 0 0.41. All right, let's stop it so we don't burn it out. Okay, so the pulling power was exactly the same. It was slightly weaker at 20 speed. We measured 0.32 before. Now we're only measuring 0.28, but obviously as a more efficient motor, it runs slower at uh, 20 speed. Uh, the, the wheels weren't going round as fast. At the higher speeds though, we saw exactly the same really. Uh, 0.40 was at 50% speed, whereas we got 0.41 last time. At 80 speed, we now got 0.41 with the new motor. We got 0.40 before. So I can't really answer the question universally. Is there anything special about model railway motors? Because there might be with some motors. But with these Hornby Pacifics and the Hornby Locos that use this motor, my conclusion is no, there's nothing special about model train motors. And in fact, if you buy the cheapest possible Chinese motors you can find, chances are they're going to be better. Overall, the new motor is better than the old one. Very, very impressive stuff. Let's set this off and let it have a bit of a run, shall we? So let me know what you think in the comments. Is that what you're expecting? Are you surprised at the result? I really am. I, would, I was going to be surprised if it matched the performance of the original stock motor. The fact that it's better in most areas and equally powerful is very, very impressive indeed. So don't pay 20 quid for a motor. Don't ever do it. It's not worth it. Get it straight from China and you can get it for, what, about a tenth of the price? Yeah. Well, thank you very much for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was some use for you. If you ever need to replace a motor, see if you can find one online. Um, I think you will do much better. For now, though, thanks for watching. Thanks for your company. Thanks for your time. And I will see you very soon on the next video. Cheers, everybody.